All righty. Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Sade. I am joined by Glenn. I lost my voice, Pogue, <laughs> um, a.k.a. the bed brat, and Chels. I have a soft voice. Turn up my mic, Pinky. <laughs> What's going on, ladies? Hey, gals. Hi. Wait, are you reading a script because you're looking at the computer? Oh, no. I, this is going to be a very, this is a good episode. There's levels. There's plans. So I have a whole document. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. I think it's about to get email or some shit. Oh, gosh. I don't know. You're, you're going to find out. <laughs> Read our applies this week? Yes, yes let's jump in. Hop in. Bye. Go ahead, Chelsea. Oh, I'm starting. Okay. So I'm leaving on, or I'm replying to my family tree. Okay. Because of you were like, you had us watch this thing on Netflix. And so I found out that my family has a family tree and it was really cool. So I'm replying to that. And then I'm leaving work on Red. <laughs> her phone just says work is ghetto. <laughs> uh. Why? What's happening? It's just like if you think about life, like you have to work your whole life and then you get like maybe 20 years if you're lucky and you don't die to be retired. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. Unless you do what you love. I mean, that's the goal. That's the goal, I guess. But like, I don't think there's a job that I would love ever. Really? What? No. What? I, really? A job? Like acting is a job. Yeah, but you would do it sometimes. It's not like a every single day. Well, no, but that's also not the type of job that you like retire at 60 and get a pension and wait for your social security. Okay, I checks. mean like a, a job <laughs> like you have to go in Monday to Friday. No. Or you have to log in Monday to that's Friday. That's for the birds. Yeah, no, that's, that's what. Yeah. That's the ghetto. No, yeah. absolutely. It makes the world go round. I guess. You gotta work. Mm -hmm. gotta go to jobs. Miss mm. Pogue. So I'm gonna reply to black love. And you know, I think that is Ooh. such a cliche term in some ways, but you guys know from past episodes, I've been getting ready to be in this damn wedding. And it finally happened this weekend and it was amazing. Hence the lost voice. Right. I think I'm <laughs> sick because it was like we were at this vineyard. And it was oh, no, cold. girl. Don't be saying that. I know. And we were standing outside taking these pictures and it was freezing. Anyway, mm. so I was like watching my friend come down the aisle to marry her husband that she met in high school. And then they went to college together. And like when we were in freshman year, she and I were roommates and he would always come to our room. He taught me how to roll my first blunt. <laughs> and like they reminded me of home and oh. like they always had a thing for each other and it took so long for it to materialize and watching them like get married was so beautiful. And I was looking at them like, wow, they really like chose each other. Like they decided to do this. Like, Did you cry? Oh, I was crying all the time. I cried when they hung up her dress on the like M Mrs. Luke uh, hanger. hanger. When the hanger came out, I was weeping in the bridal Aww. suite. It was when I saw her walk down the aisle with her father, I was weeping. Yeah. So and and that that was another uh, instance of black love. When I was looking at the way that all of her friends showed up for her, mm. I was like, "This is black love." The way that we're yes. here for each other is black love. There was just so much black love everywhere abundantly it was amazing now that leads me to now my on red <laughs> is um the toxic masculinity that just continues to just be evident in this world um so we were on, so we were on the like shuttle <laughs> on the way back from the wedding and people are tired drunk ready to take their asses back to the hotel. And there's this one dude that was trying to turn up the whole wedding. And he's like, turn up, we on the party bus back. And we're all sleeping, looking at him like, yo, you're mad annoying. He's like, <laughs> y'all are some miserable women. <gasps> y'all are corny, y'all are boring. This is, a, this is the most miserable bus of women I've ever seen in my life. Miserable bus of women. Miserable, <laughs> miserable, miserable women. And then a friend, <laughs> of mine, this kid I was friends with in college, I haven't seen him in years, suddenly started cursing out this other girl on the bus. He said, you're not a woman, you're a clown. What? No idea where it came this from. This was after the I wedding, I stepped off the bus to pee, came back on to chaos. Mm. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Tequila, open bar, and um, fragile masculinity. Egos, yes. egos <laughs> fragile and toxic egos. masculinity. 
Yeah. That, that's what will manifest. That's a cocktail. Correct. Yes. Well, what about you, ma'am? Yikes. Woo. Um, I am leaving on red um, the essentially ethnic cleansing that is happening in Palestine, yeah. East Jerusalem. Um, basically, there's this constant... I don't even want to call it a battle. I've actually been seeing a lot of posts that are like, be very choice with your words when talking about this because people are trying to say it's like a land dispute. And it's like, it's not a land dispute. That land belonged to Palestinians for years. And over time, it had just been shrunken and shrunken and shrunken and shrunken. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just terrible to see that this is still happening. I really feel for those people. And I cannot imagine like what it feels like to be there right now seeing that like some mosque was like bombed or like tear gas was being um let loose what what is that called when you disperse tear gas i don't know they were tear gassed but it um, like happened during their holiday yeah so i just think it's disgusting and i hope there is a resolution i don't know what that even looks like because it seems like the prime minister of israel is like i don't care mm. so I don't know. I've heard that Biden is like giving him the side eye. I don't know if that leads to like sanctions or any action because I know there's a very sensitive relationship between the U.S. and Israel. But yeah, fuck that. So I'm leaving that on red and I am definitely praying for the people of Palestine. And yeah, I, ugh, I just, y'all know how I feel. I won't get into it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. In Colombia, I'll just say that. Oh, yes. And Colombia. So I actually saw this post that, like, we as a people really need to take, like, our actions globally because, like, white supremacy is, like, so global yes. in that, like, you're seeing impact, it, like, white supremacy as a whole, but, like, you see the influence that the US and capitalism has had and how that has affected, like, right. the power structures of Colombia. Like, you see it happening in India with, like, the greed and, like, the yeah. Modi doesn't give a shit about these people, like, all dying. And then you see what's happening in Palestine and it's all this, like, bubble that just needs to burst. Mm -hmm. And, the, and it starts here? I is think, it, the... no, it really starts with, like, us understanding, like, all these things are interconnected. So right. when we talk about, like, Black Lives Matter and the movements that we're having mm. here on our soil and, like, getting human rights for our people, like, that spans so wide. Yeah. And it's hard to think about, right? Because we're like, yo, we're just trying to get our rights together. Right. Right. Yeah. But it is all really interconnected. Yeah. And I hope one day we can all come together because I do not in any way think that Black people need to like pour from an empty cup and not receive any water back. But I hope that it can go in both ways. Mm -hmm. So that's my red. I'm replying to outside. <laughs> outside. outside. She's nice. opening up. We love to see it. So <laughs> that's my reply. That was vague. Okay. Didn't you all have an interesting experience outside this weekend? Huh? Oh, wow. They can't recall? <laughs> that's for Patreon. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, mm. You heard it here first. Well, I heard Shadi went to a sex club. That's all I'll say. Um, you heard it. I heard you that heard Chelsea it went to no, an anal not demo. What? A pegging demo. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> BGT exclusive. We launched our Patreon. So maybe, you know, once we figure out how this all gets tiered, you can hear that story. But <laughs> allegedly, someone went to a sex party and allegedly there was a pegging. There demo. was a pegging demo. OK, like, we'll probably talk about it more. next time. But this time. We're talking about mothers. It's just inappropriate. So correct. <laughs> well, put a pin in it. So we'll put a pin in it. We have it. A, a black girl doing shit. We first have a hotline bling, and oh, I know you guys right. keep trying to kill my segment, I don't but kill the I'm segment. very passionate. I don't want to kill the segment. <laughs> um, I actually had one too. I forgot. Well, my hotline bling is actually that I am trying to make someone's hotline bling. I met this guy, and I never got his fucking number i fucked that up i fumbled the bag oh. wait is it the guy that i saw in the, the barbershop no no no, no. Oh. But, but funny enough he's also asian so yeah but anyways but then i found him because he told me what he does he's very high up at a certain company oh, so it was okay. very easy to find him so you did some stalking i did some stalking <laughs> 
I slid in the DMs. So let's see. You. I don't. He hasn't even like followed me back. I don't even. He What'd doesn't you look like an active hey, IG right. user. He's so probably not a user. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while. Well, go find him on LinkedIn. Well, I actually happened to see that he was on a podcast of a friend's. And so I was like, oh, my God, look at this. <laughs> oh, who is this? Yeah. Okay. I'm curious. Yeah. You know what? I'll save my hotline bling because it is very inappropriate. I'm so, trying right. to get. This is an appropriate yeah. episode. I'm trying to get my hotline. I'm trying to bling his hotline. So. I okay. wish you the best. Sis. Good luck. Thank you. I'll say a prayer. Thank you so much. Black Girl Doing Shit? Yes, we do have one of those this week. Um, our Black Girl Doing Shit is Chantrell P. Lewis, a native of... Oh, I was going to try and do the New Orleans accent. No, no, that was terrible. <laughs> try, it. <laughs> try it, try it. No, well, baby. Nola, no, I can't. No, no baby. baby. No Orleans. So sorry baby. to y'all, to anybody <laughs> I'm offended with my terrible <laughs> New Orleans <laughs> accent. You I love y'all's accent, though. I love it. I must say, for the record, it's the best accent. It is an incredible <laughs> accent. Um, Chantrell is a producer, filmmaker, director, storyteller, and curator, um, alum of Howard. A H U. You yes. know. Uh, here she goes again. Here she goes again. <laughs> Ashanga priestess of the Lukumi faith, holla, and an all around badass. Um, Chantrell has made her directorial debut with In Our Mother's Gardens, which we are going to get into, but it has been described as a beautiful tribute to the complex relationships between Black women connected by lineage and love. Mm. So, in the spirit of the film and like a late Mother's Day, yeah. I wanted us to take a minute and honor our mothers and our mother figures and our lineage that are here with us or in spirit. So, if you all will kindly, you know, similar to the film, give me your and the daughter of yes, oh yes, you I don't have that. to, or you could just shout out women. You can do it however you want to do it. Okay. Well, I'm the daughter of Monique, the granddaughter of Joanne, the great granddaughter of Virginia, and the great great granddaughter of Emma May. Damn, she went far oh back. Oh man, I should have done. I should have done. I checked my answer. I, I needed to check mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the daughter of Cecilia, the granddaughter of Utakia, the great granddaughter of Gregoria, and the great great granddaughter of Antonia. Yes. Wow. I am not going to be able to go that far. Um, okay. I am the daughter of Sabrina, the granddaughter of Eliza, and the great granddaughter of Vivienne. And I want to do an extra shout out to my godparents that passed away, Barbara Bay and Yafe McMullen. Yeah. Also, shout out to Mary Frances Pogue, who is my sister. Yes. Like my, I think I'm like her. As your sister? Not her my reincarnation. Sister, my reincarnation, oh. but like. While she was alive, it's very odd. That's my yeah. father's mother. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I love this. Okay. Shout out to Baby. That's my father's mother. That's such a cute name. Her name is Baby? Well, that's what I know her as. I'm sure that's not on her birth certificate. Right. <laughs> I mean, I have families. Somebody in my family's name is Banan Lamon. Like banana lemons. I shouldn't laugh. So uh, you never know. I shouldn't laugh. Correct. I know. That's I don't. unique. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> banana lemon. I actually feel like now that needs to be incorporated in our lives. In some, I don't know how. I use it. I don't know how. But like if you're like, you look good. It's like, you got a little banana, banana lemon. A little <laughs> spicy. Oh, Lord. All right, y'all. So let's. Group chat, shall we? Right, yeah. Yes. Okay, so you guys know, we just said we're going to talk about this film. Um, the documentary actually, it's called In Our Mother's Gardens. It actually debuted at the 2020 Black Star Film Festival mm. and earned a Shine Award for Best Film. And then I think it was acquired by Array, which I think is Ava DuVernay, and yep. then made its way to Netflix. Um, but it features interviews with Tarana Burke, Tina Ferris, Dr. Brittany Cooper, Teresa S. Thames, many, many just dope, incredible black women. So I highly suggest you all check it out in our mother's gardens. It's on Netflix. But I was like, girls, we must watch because she's like a, she's in my religion, like family friend. And I thought it was perfect for Mother's Day. But I yeah. want to know, like, what were your first impressions? Like, what did it make you feel? Let's just kind of like decompress our thoughts and yeah. feelings. Go ahead, Joe. Why? <laughs> well, I'll say that it got me thinking. Like, it made me go back to my ancestry mm -hmm. work, which I've been, like, really excited about. 
earlier last year and kind of like fell off. It was definitely like a quarantine project for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And it made me fire it back up. Look at these women, um, my lineage as a whole. It made me think about um, Homegoing by Yajesi, where like each chapter is a different ancestor, a different person in the family line. And there's actually like a a story behind them. You know, you think about all these people that came before you, but you Mm -hmm. can't think about, you can't, sometimes can't fathom the lives that they lived and what it looked like, what it sounded like, like, you know? Um, So it made me think about that, the way that these women were able to tell these stories, these little small anecdotes that characterized the women that they came from. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. um, The idea of like how different people receive slash give love, especially Mm -hmm. black women. Um, I thought it was interesting the idea of how we like have these like visions of what like a grandma is supposed to look like Mm -hmm. or what a mom is supposed to look like and how in our communities oftentimes it doesn't necessarily look the same way it looks in like a storybook. Right. Um, But that love is still so like deep rooted and I don't know, like strong. Yeah. It For me, I really loved this because it made me realize how important it is to tell our stories. Like there's power in our stories and our people, the complexity of our stories, the beauty of black stories, the commonalities, the humanity. Like mm. people are giving... Um, Lena Waithe's, uh, what was it? Them. 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 They're giving that a lot of slack. I haven't seen it, but it is interesting to think about how, and maybe it's just because I'm not like a movie buff or like a show aficionado, but like, I feel like it's very rare that you get to see like just black people being Being. black. (laughs) And like, this was so like, someone just sitting down telling about their grandma. And like, it's not necessarily the most like, crazy story or concept but it was like oh my god like my grandma used to do that or like I know someone else's grandma might have done that or Mm -hmm. to see the similarities in their stories or the differences in their stories like it felt very representative of kind of what we do but told through this different lens of like a lineage yeah 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 I mean there were definitely stories like when that one woman that we all loved that lived in Compton, but she was from New Orleans and she was a part of your religion. Yeah. Um, talked about how her grandmothers were not the praying type. One mm. of them bet horses and one of them had like 11 husbands. Yes. yes. Both of my grandmothers were praying types. So Mary Frances, my dad's mom, was like a chain smoker, <laughs> um, always had a bottle of like, uh, what's that Something. wine with the kangaroo on the front? <gasps> uh, yellowtail? Yellowtail. <laughs> A liter of yellowtail in the fridge. And she would just sit there with her yellowtail, smoking a cigarette on the phone with my Aunt Rini all day. The phone that's on the long cord. Yes. And she would stretch it all the way around into the dining room, all the way around to the kitchen. Like just, they would just be on the phone. She'd just be minding her business. She played her numbers faithfully <laughs> every single day. This is a girl after my own heart. I know. That's why I was like, you're my sis. <laughs> <laughs> You want to just chat with your with your sister. You're retired. It was great. She was great. Um, but yeah, I mean, but she was also a, a baking grandmother. She'd make me a whole cake, a whole pie. Oh my god, it was crazy when I went to go see her on on like in summer on the summer breaks. Aww. Her the top of her uh, refrigerator would be stacked with mad chips ahoy. Every snack I would ever want in my life, she would go to the commissary and buy all of them because she lived on an army base. I was like, the commissary? commissary. I was like, I gotta go down to the commissary. (laughs) And she grew collard greens and turnip greens in the backyard and she would cook them. Yeah. So a lot of those stories, I was like, this is my grandmother. Yeah. And it's those little anecdotes, you know? Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't talk more about food and grandmas. Because I feel like that's definitely a grandma thing. Like stuffing your face like baby, my dad's mom definitely would like load up my plate with like rice, uh, peas, Stew chicken, but like it was like a mountain. Of no, it was never that, like, none of that. Like you need to watch that waste. They were like, no, 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 come get some more. Eat, oh, eat, no, eat. not Eliza. You needed to watch your waste. <laughs> but yes, I was tiny, so <laughs> was. Well, I didn't put this together, and maybe well, 
everyone reads, but you know, Miss. No, I'm not really. Literary, literary <laughs> scholar over here. So this was inspired by Alice Walker's collection, mm. In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, Womanist that. Prose, yes. which is like 36 separate pieces that um, Alice Walker wrote spanning many years, but it's based on her understanding of womanist theory. And womanist theory is um, what Walker defines as black feminism or feminists of color. Have you guys ever heard of this? No, I've definitely heard she of calls it. Black feminism, womanism. It's called womanist theory. Okay, say mas. Yeah, like you what's the, the difference theory? between that? And I feminism? think it's like Just specific a... to the experience of black women. That's fire. Yeah. So a black feminist or feminist of color. Is a I mean, I could I could dig more on this on Wikipedia. This is why I got notes, y'all. Hello. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess that kind of made sense to the conversation being very much in the black female lens because we talk about this a lot how it's hard to kind of like balance being a black right woman like we have an extra layer right so it is distinct yeah totally yeah i also love that the lineage or like the story of lineage was very much like the women side of things like even the the woman from New Orleans was like mother's baby, father's maybe, which mm -hmm. is something like I always hear. And like something we spoke about with Chrissy about how your grandma technically has carried you as well right. in her womb. Like, yeah, that's like crazy to think about because like she carried your mom and the baby has all the eggs it's gonna ever have. So she carried you too. Yeah, I brought that up to my roommate when we were watching it together and he was like, what? Like he like it blew his mind. It's crazy. Yeah. And that really kind of leads into I wanted to talk about some of the themes. Um, and the first one was generational trauma, but like particularly between mothers and daughters. Like, mm -hmm. what do you guys think about that? I have some prompts, but anything jumping out to you that you recall from the film or that you've experienced? There was one part of the film where one of the women said like, her, the, all the women in her life, she remembers them living as if everything was possible. Mm. If y'all remember that? Yeah, I do. And that's how I feel like I grew up um, witnessing my mother. Like there was no, um, like no ceiling, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, if there was any type of, like, she seemed like she just had it all and still like has it all. Um very like nuclear family, very, you know, small house, like six siblings, three bedrooms, but they were all like happy and thriving mm -hmm. and just working hard. Um, so I don't know that I have, there could be traumas that I've inherited that I'm unaware of, mm -hmm. but nothing that I'd personally witnessed. I don't know about y'all. Yeah. Nothing that's jumping out to me. Um, oh my I gosh. No, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> As like traumatic. Um, but I mean, the idea of like, well, I guess maybe not traumatic, but like the idea of coping sometimes on your own that was like brought up in the yeah, film, like definitely. dealing with things on your own, like you don't really need to be spilling your problems on other people, like that kind of attitude. But I mean, I think my mom is like, has definitely, she's like the modern version of the women in her family. Mm -hmm. Like thinking about what you said about no ceilings, like for her, there was a ceiling, like she wasn't from this country. It was very, it wasn't the same, but she always taught me that for me, there's no ceiling. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like I was born here, I have all these opportunities. Um, so yeah, I can't think of like any traumas though. Oh my gosh. The women who kind of spoke about like that hard love relationship, I was like, yes, you are my people. I can completely identify mm -hmm. because like my mom is very loving, but like she was not like, I, I don't, at least I don't recall like getting in bed and like snuggling up to my mom no. or like having that like very emotional relationship. But like she expressed her love in like discipline and like it was a lot to kind of navigate like me and my sisters talk about like our mothers raised us to be like very independent and strong and I almost think like to a fault because yeah. like we talk about how hard it is to like open up like where you find that like balance of like 
emotion. And like, I imagine it's very challenging to be like a matriarch and navigating like depression, pressures, like whatever you're going through. And so like when a lot of the women talked about like, like I think the woman told a story about how her grandfather passed away and she had to like work an event or something. And mm -hmm. she was like, well, can't do anything about it. Like go, go do your work you got and then you come back and cry and then you got to keep it moving and it was like that 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 resonated heavy yeah like the 24 hours yeah thing she said yeah i mean i i can gauge that my mom and my and her mother had a very like close emotional mm -hmm. type of bond i recently found this like memory book that my grandmother made for my mother that had every single one of her like uh a plus papers, Aww. her report cards, any little like cutout when she was written about my mom was like, you know, valedictorian of everything, scholar of everything. And her mom saved every little thing and put it in a little book. Mm -hmm. um, That's how my mom is. <laughs> yeah. I my mom is like that with me as well. But I I don't do emotions with Oh, and so your mom is like that, but you don't give it she back. She would love to do it. I remember one time we like went to a bed and breakfast together and we shared a bed and she was trying to cuddle with me. And I was like, whoo, back up off of me. I don't <laughs> like it. It makes oh, me so uncomfortable. See, I slept, it's a fun fact. I slept in my mom's bed till I was like in high school. Oh, I, get, I mean, when I went like, to go visit my grandmother, I slept in the bed with her until she passed away when I was in college. Like I yeah. would stay in the bed with her. Yeah. I think the part yeah. that I did relate to, I wouldn't say it's trauma though, is like yeah. my mom not necessarily being like, oh, like, I love you so much, but like all of her actions showed it. Correct. Like mm -hmm. same. literally she has all of my projects from kindergarten right. saved and she's, she's like so proud of everything I do. And like, as I said, like we, I slept in her bed till I was like in high school. It was kind of embarrassing. I had my own bed, but <laughs> so I would just, you I would just rather her. sleep with her. Yeah. Um, and like watch movies and like eat peanut butter. Someone That's said, so cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, that their grandmother wouldn't say I love you, but said like love is a verb. Yeah, yes, I remember that. That's, I can relate to that. So yeah. can I, so can I. I want to be the type of, I want to be like an overly cuddly. Me too. Mom. So do I. Me too. And I don't think that, I don't know. I think my mom, it wasn't that she didn't want to or that she necessarily felt traumas. I think she was just like, she had a kid at 17, 18. So like she just like jumped in and was just like, go. Gotta go, gotta and, do it. Gotta. <laughs> and also like, I'm assuming, but if she didn't get that, then you can't like just teach yourself that. Yeah. Unless like you're, unless like you're like us and you're like actively thinking about that. Right. And even us, we say that now and who knows how we're going to actually be. be. Well, when I think about it, so my, when my, my grandmother came to the States when she was maybe 12 mm -hmm. with her sisters, her mother didn't come. And I think... Yeah, that's normal. I don't think she saw her mother again. Oh, ever? I think it, or like she rarely saw her mother. That's traumatic, I feel like. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is. I feel so like I usually it's like this, the kid or the older sibling comes. Yeah. And then the mom comes, but. So then, so they came with their dad, who was apparently like very stern, very intense. My grandfather thought he spoke Spanish. That's how thick, I guess, his accent <laughs> allegedly was, which is hilarious to me. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know if my grandmother saw her mother again or like if she did, it was like one time. Some It's some crazy story. And so I think maybe my grandmother didn't really know like mothering or had like a weird thing. But when I think about my mom and her mom, I definitely see that they, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that was actually lovey-dovey now that I think about it. It's also like for my mom, my mom was the youngest of 10 and I'm the youngest of two. And I think sometimes we relate. Whoa, 10? Yeah. And I think sometimes we relate to being the youngest. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, I don't know. She kind of gets me. Yeah. That's beautiful. I don't know. I even think about like, I never wanted to tell my mom about boys or things because she would make it a whole thing like i still think i view the whole thing as if i'm like a 13 year old who's like embarrassed mm. like that's how i move like at this wedding this weekend my mom was like so were there <laughs> any mm, boys like she didn't even want to say it because she knew i'd be like mom <laughs> mom oh my staff. god yeah like that's just how i am i'm like immature or something <laughs> it's so weird but she probably has so much good advice for you she will quote like Beyonce songs and do cringy <laughs> things. She's like, well, if he liked it, he should have put a ring on it. Like, that's the kind of stuff that she does. That's hilarious. <laughs> that I, I just can't take it. <laughs> Is she being dead ass? She's being Probably. dead ass. <laughs> she 
Yes. I mean, but that's right, right? He used I to agree. put your love on top. Like, she does stuff like Stop. that. Stop. I'm dead ass. I've never seen your mother do these things. <laughs> she things. does that. She has done it. That's kind of legendary. <laughs> it makes me cringe. <laughs> I don't know if I would receive it as well. But I would think that's hilarious. To spectate, I'm I would. obsessed with that. <laughs> it's, I can't. I cannot. Okay, so aside from the traumatic bits or like, you know, overcoming things, mm. I really loved the importance of ancestral work and yeah. reverence. You, Chelsea, went through your whole chart and your tree. Like, Glenn, you said you went back. What was that like? Like, what did it make you feel? <sighs> yeah, God. I got emotional and it was like really weird. And luckily... Our family tree has like a lot of pictures. Yeah, which, that's so dope that you have that. Yeah, yeah, so I have a picture of my great, great grandma. Obviously, she's super old in the picture, but it was like, wow, it's so cool to see. And then realizing that like a lot of them were like native, like Trinidadian people. So I'm just like, wow, that country is like truly like my land. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's really like in me. They've been there for like generations. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. It felt really. It, it also was interesting because my family, I will say, we have a lot of secrets. Yep. So like seeing the tree. And first of all, it was like I had to call my cousin to even get access to the family tree because she's like, I don't want it public and all this stuff. And seeing the people that I thought maybe had one husband and they had three. Mm -hmm. Turn up. And I was like, wait, I thought she always was married to this person. Um, so seeing like those little family secrets revealed, but mm. um, it was really cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Um, I've talked about this before, but like when I went to Ghana with my parents two years ago and my family did, my mom did this ancestry thing and it told her that she had like no African ancestry on her mother's line. Yes, I remember this. Yeah, which would mean that like, so they go, they trace the, the matrilineal line as far back as they can go. And according to the test at the, the, the genesis of her matrilineal line is like a white woman or something. It came back not having any genesis in Africa. So then, so that's what got me like fascinated in doing this an uh, ancestry work. Cause it was like, sorry, do you mean to tell me that like my family got black over time because mm. like a white woman was with a black man and then they had children and then they mm -hmm. continued to partner with black people? Like, what is that? What's the tea on that? What's the tea on that? Still not sure. Like, I don't believe it. I think there was a, I, I think we need to redo the test. <laughs> I mean, okay. I know you guys make fun of my clubhouse, Eidos family but a lot of them say like some of them say like they were taken or stolen from or given to american or british people i guess from africa but some of them really believe that they were I mean, here I mean, yeah. yeah no that could have been maybe yeah. that's what is. our genesis is yeah so it's possible but Black, and like the, even no but because who's the white lady either way they have to they have to trace or, the, or they can only trace from they africa trace to africa there's right. no start okay. in africa but even in the even in the video there was a girl i forgot who it was but she said she was like native american mm -hmm. and you look at the picture and it's like a Native, Amer it's a Native American, but it's not necessarily what we were taught Native Americans right, exactly. look like. It's a, that, black woman, it's a black right. woman, but she's Native. Right, exactly. So, I mean, we got to figure that we're out. We're praying for you, sis. I know. You know, it's okay if, you you, you know, the genesis was a white woman. It's, it's okay. I mean, that changed Maybe everything. you're not. Yeah, maybe you're not. It maybe you're a, a true American. <laughs> the whole thing was funny. My mom, <laughs> she burst into tears because no, everybody- she didn't. Was, well, because everybody around her was like, damn, sis, I'm sorry. <laughs> She started crying. Oh, damn. It was like all in per. Oh, everybody oh, was traumatized. There. We were standing at the doorway of no and return. I'm envisioning at like Cape Coast Castle. Some drums. And the man ba -da -ba 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 -ba. pulled out the paper. And he was like, You have this. This no is not your home. Ancestry. And then my mom was like, You are not the African. Right. You are not the African. <laughs> and damn. we just finished walking through these, like, this castle, seeing these, like, places where, 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 like, they're like, this is the women's cell. And I was like, damn, my ancestors are here. We're in here fighting <laughs> to live. Well, yours <laughs> like, were. Your dad's side, dad's maybe. Your dad's, I was like, okay, dad, my dad's be holding there. it down. 
But this is another thing I found in doing my ancestry work. My great grandmother on my dad's side was adopted and we have no idea where from. So when you say secrets, oh, no wow. idea where she was from. And when I, I remember my memories of seeing, of meeting her when I was a kid, she she never spoke. I don't think she ever spoke. It's very interesting. She was super quiet. I think a lot intense. of like, I think a lot of like the older ancestors, probably it's probably different if you're like in a religion that's super ancestral. Right. But I think a lot of them were like, certain things are like not to be brought up mm -hmm. yeah like let things my family says let the dead rest like mm. let things go we literally have no idea where she came from yeah that's crazy no idea it's really interesting that's kind of she was wild. adopted into this big family where randomly sugar ray leonard is my cousin oh. because of her but she was adopted oh but she was ad adopted into the Leonard family. That's so interesting. Isn't that so wild? Yo, that's fascinating. We should do, um, I'm just doing a call out to anyone who maybe works on family trees. Yes. Wants to sponsor a little collaboration us. with us. Yeah, a little collabo. <laughs> just throwing it out there. You got three black people, very different backgrounds, trying to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. But um, I wonder though, like what it f does for you all to, to have that understanding of what came before you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like for me to be able to like feel connected to those roots and to like put together those pieces gives me like a stronger sense of self, you know? Yep. I mean, yeah. I told you, I started crying and I was like, this is weird. Why the hell am I crying? Looking at pictures. But like, it's like, whoa, look at what I came from. It's like, this is yeah. who I am. All those people are you. Well, I think it was the professor, the Puerto Rican professor, she was like, we literally came here and created new life of like nothing. Whether you came here or whether you were still here, no matter what, somebody tried to tear your shit down, mm -hmm. like eradicate your people essentially. And we still were resilient, still popping. Right. Like that's crazy. It's miraculous. It really is. I cried so well i didn't fully cry because i didn't want to talk about crying so i was just kind of like privately tearing up through most of the film <laughs> but um i was thinking about my grandma so much and my my grandparents were definitely my mom's mom and it's so crazy so y'all know i'm into all the spirituality and all the you know whatever you want to call it hoodoo blue blue whatever <laughs> and um when i moved to the bay before i moved to the bay i did this kind of like ceremony it's kind of like a cleansing and mm -hmm. throughout it um the woman who did it for me was like yo your grandma is like on here heavy like wow, she's in here heavy amazing. and i was like oh my god my grandma's with me this is so beautiful because i actually didn't even go to my grandma's funeral my grandma passed away i was living in china and my family was like well we're, like it Ugh. doesn't make sense like it's gonna be hard to like fly you here from china for the funeral and then fly you back home so i wasn't even at the funeral so like i never had like a formal goodbye with her but like I don't know. I don't. Was that hard for you? Not really, because I don't believe in that type of stuff. So, like, I always felt her presence with me, but it was a bit different of an experience as my like whole family was together, and like I didn't see anyone at the funeral. I didn't see what that experience was like. Maybe for the better, because I heard it was like really emotionally intense. But anywho, so she tells me this whole story. I moved to my first apartment in the Bay. My grandmother's favorite flower is growing outside of my apartment, like Beautiful. right outside, nowhere else, just right there, right in front of my window. And it was oh, one of those saying moments. hello. Yeah, and it was one of those moments where I was like, yo, you hear what me says? I see you. And it was just like all like imagining being able to like trace back all the women in my family. It made me want to like learn more about them. I called yeah. my dad today and I was like, what was your grandmother's name? But I can't remember. I'm going to get it together, though. Yeah, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to get it together. There's a thing I was thinking about, though, as I was watching the film and even you saying, like, you knowing your grandmother's favorite flower. Like, I feel like I know little things about my grandparents that characterize them, but not their, like, interior lives. Like, I feel like a mm -hmm. lot of it was, like, them caring for me or just, like, mm. did you meet, sitting you met with them? them. Yeah, like, I mean, I would go to my grandmother's house for, like, three weeks in the summertime but I would just, she would just make me cakes and pies and whole tins of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> and I would drive around with her and we would go to the movies. And like, I remember her talking a lot to me about her husband, my dad's father, because he had passed when I was like two years old. Wow. So she spoke a lot about how much she missed him and like songs would come on the radio and she would say, oh, this is our song. But there were just like little things that I didn't, like I felt like I didn't 
know about her. Like, I wish I knew little stories about her. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like they're just... Ask your dad. Like, grandmothers, but, like... Slash, you know? think about that. And we have our mothers. We all have our mothers here still. Let's make Gotta that... Get them. Yeah, like, get those deeper stories. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, make that effort to get those little chunks and nuggets. Um, totally. I didn't meet my grandma. I'm the only grandchild that she didn't meet. And she actually died. On your mom's side? or On my mom's side. Okay. Yeah, I met baby. Um, and she she died January 3rd, 93. And allegedly I was born in 93 on January 18th. So... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I'm right. the only one that she didn't meet. But like, yeah, I hear all these stories. I hear like what even when she was like super, super old and like tiny and shrinking, like people had the deepest respect for her. Um, one of my like cousins said something rude to her and somehow she had a belt and it extended and hit him <laughs> <laughs> I like a lasso. <laughs> and she was like tiny and old. But um, yeah, like I hear <laughs> stories about her, but I never actually met her. Yeah. Which kind of sucks. I don't know. I My mom had me do this thing one time where I, I was supposed to call my great grandmother every day and ask her a question about her life. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. Girl, maybe the 10th call, she was like, Why are you asking me all these questions? <laughs> Your this child calling me again with these questions. Tell her I'm, I'm tired. Oh my <laughs> yes, God. Yes, she was over it. It was done. <laughs> it was this little journal. I was supposed to fill it in. She was tired like she was over it that's so cute i had that's to so interview cute. an immigrant so i just interviewed my grandma <laughs> and like we would just kick it and she was then she told me mad and she stories. would want to talk that's yeah amazing. she also loved the wendy williams show <laughs> so like we would sit or like oprah so i remember like after school we would just like sit and watch oprah and she would just read people for filth and and that's when i got to really like <gasps> see the side of her outside of like Take care of the yeah, home exactly. and They'll stuff like, hey, like that. Baby. She'd be yeah. like, why is she wearing that? What is that? Oh, no. Like, Brilliant. Yo, my grandmother was on oxygen, like could not breathe in the bed. And I came home one year from college and I was like, oh, I think my boyfriend was visiting. My ex-boyfriend was visiting and I was going to introduce them. And she was like, hold on. She put on a whole wig. <gasps> she wanted to do her makeup. And then she meets him and tells me, like, what are you wearing? This is how you walking around. Yes, that was Eliza. Brilliant. That was Eliza. Oh. I mean, yeah, I'm, I agree. <laughs> she was She's like, still a person. Yeah, she was like, you're not going to have me out here just with my scarf on. Yeah. I was like, okay, sis, you're absolutely right. Iconic. Presentation. A lot of these girls out here could learn from Eliza. That's facts. They go out in their head wrap. I mean, I do love a little doobie look. But yes, no, no, no absolutely. That's ratchet. Absolutely. <laughs> I think what I really loved um, with the scenes with the woman, I call her Mama Coco. Her name's Coco. But that we all were obsessed with was... Is that um, the one that drew on her eyebrows? Yes. Oh. Yes, and like, she had mad jewelry. All the jewelry. How about how incredible those pieces were? Oh. Yes. I was like, how do I get some of these pieces? Amazing, amazing. Please. amazing. I'll plug you, I'll plug you. Please. But um, she said something... Uh, I hope I have the quote right. She said she knew women. She came from a lineage of women who had proverbs in their mouths, mm. which I thought oh, was so fire. Delicious. Do you guys have any sayings that you remember from your family or <laughs> that like your moms or grandmas would say? So there's a few, but I feel like they're just like Trinidadian, like goat don't make sheep or like... <laughs> Two Please. man rat can't live in the same house. You gotta break these What's down. What's a two man rat? <laughs> so goat don't make sheep means like I'm like her because I'm her daughter. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, a goat is a goat. A goat's goat not gonna make a, make sheep. a sheep. Yeah, yeah. So like we're alike. Exactly. Or like um, two man rat can't live in the same house. That's like when I was a teenager and I was getting sassy with her. She's like, you're not grown. Like two adults can't live in the same house. You're a child. Ah. Ah, brilliant i like those that's that's yeah. those are good they didn't say nothing but oh he a poor creature which uh, don't know what that means what you don't know what it creeter? means poor creature like a poor cre creature or a poor critter and god told him i didn't know 
which I guess is God Almighty. No, that's just like what my grandmother used to say over and over. No <laughs> proverbs, just saying. <laughs> and Lord, just those things are just said over and over and over again. <laughs> Lord, What's you the poor point? creature. <laughs> oh, God, Tomati, no. They just out here in these streets. Lord, Lord, Lord. That was like literally, that's what my grandmother said. I love poor like, creature. <laughs> poor creature. That's amazing. My mom's line, which I think she got from her mom, was... When you know a ting, don't act like you don't know a ting. Basically, like when you see something, when somebody shows you, they act the fool, they act the ass, you know the vibes, you Mm -hmm. know what's up. So when something happens and I'm like, damn, my mom's like, you already knew what was up. When you know a ting, don't act like you don't know a ting. I was like, damn, damn, you was right. (laughs) I did it anyways. That's a good one. (laughs) I mean, facts. My mom used to say something about like, I don't want to be caught out with my slip showing or something, which I mean, which I guess means like, don't get caught shit together. Yeah. Have your shit together. Yeah. Don't have your, don't be caught with your slip showing. Like just be buttoned up. Just keep it tight. Right. Damn. Shorty used to be out here wearing slips. I know. That's what really gets me. I'm like, and lipstick. Lips. The slip show, a slip. (laughs) Yo, people used to really like curl their hair at night. Oh yeah. My mom loves, my mom loves saying that People don't know how to dress anymore. That's yeah. true, though. Like she's because uh, it was the the advent of jeans. I feel like. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that did it. Yeah. Before then, they used to wear like furs and nice stuff. Good for them. I can't. <laughs> I'm still in my little Nike sweat set. <laughs> well, concluding, I feel like I wrote an essay here. <laughs> okay. Creating new lessons generationally. We are sowing new seeds. Okay. what are some things you guys have thought about that you think you're going to try to implement as future mothers to be i was going to say potential but you know what i know y'all want to have some babies so i'm gonna say future mothers to be lord creed ready for the paul creed give that child a baby lord help us give her a baby honey (laughs) you know she want them kids child oh my gosh (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i love this glenn Glenn was going down south oh, every summer. South over here, child. Um, have you thought of some lessons, Chelsea? Or things, um, that, ways you want to be a mother? Wanna I definitely want to be loving. Yes. And like use my words and and my actions. I definitely want to be open-minded. Like if my kid tells me something, not to flip out, mm-hmm. but like to talk about it. There's a lot of things I want to do, but like, who knows what it's going to be like when there's an actual human being getting on my last fucking nerves. <laughs> so I'm not going to judge. We'll see. Yeah, I love the loving thing. I, I And it's interesting, like you say, you don't know how you're going to be. But as a teacher now, I find myself being so nurturing with my kids. But they're not your kids. I know. Not my kids. That's different. My students, right? Yeah. But you're right. It might turn out differently with my own kid. I would hope not, though. Yeah. Um, but it feels like this inherent thing I have in me to be like a nurturer. And I was thinking about this earlier, which I don't mean to like psychoanalyze myself and make it sound like deep and dark, but I was like, damn, am I better at giving love than receiving love? I don't know. Hmm. I find myself being like so ready to give. I was even thinking about some of my friendships where like I always end up with a friend that I want to like take in and feed. You do do that. And talk to and like come lay on my shoulder and my bosom type thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I want to give all that to my future children and I want them to know me and to know me, I guess. Mm. Like I'm thinking about like the way we talked, the way I was saying, like there's just holes in some of the stories of like my grandparents and stuff, my grandmothers. Mm. I don't want there to be any holes. Like I'm going to just be telling stories all the time. I know you will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there. remember that time? Well, there was this time. Like, Lord, gonna, he was a poor creator. You're going to put on that fake Southern accent? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I need to always be regaling them with stories. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know? I love that. Yeah. yeah. I'm just not beating my kids. I don't care. It's not happening. If your kid comes up to you and goes, fuck you, mom, you stupid bitch. Oh, my God. They're going to have Whooped. to get sat down and we're gonna have to talk about how that's not okay hopefully they don't even have that language in their arsenal but no i can't i'm sorry i don't want to be my kids either but they said that shit (laughs) no i mean how would your kid even get there like you just don't know that's the thing you don't know know. i don't don't know know. i think it's in because but i I hope it's impossible i think we 
Okay, I won't speak for you guys. For my family, there was no communication. So, like, my niece was tripping, like, bugging out one day, like, was mad because she couldn't play a game, was getting <laughs> frustrated with the iPad, and she was doing the most. And I could have easily, like, spazzed out on her, and she started to cry. And I was like, sit down, what's wrong? Why are you crying? What's wrong? And I, she was just like, I'm sad. I was like, why are you sad? She's like, because I miss my mother. And I was oh. like, wow. So she's not Somebody just tripping. She's yeah, yeah. just sad because she misses her mother. She's on vacation. She hasn't seen her mother. And like, yes, that takes patience. That takes time. But like, for me growing up, that would have been getting my ass beat and then not being able to cry. Like, stop tripping. Right. I definitely think that's something that we should all strive for, for sure. Yeah. But like, just like, remember... And I know we all feel this way to like give our parents a little a little bit of grace. Absolutely. Because like babysitting your niece, having students, mm -hmm. I was a teacher too, is not the same as having Absolutely. a child 24-7. You know? So like right. yeah. no, I mean, who knows what, what that's going to like, feel like. Oh, I love them. But then I was like, damn, well, maybe I love them because they get to they yeah, they go, go home. home. Yeah. yeah, they're not your But, I, also, but I, I think like with for them. me, the responsibility of being... A parent and no shade to any parents that beat their kids. That's your business. But to me, the responsibility of being a parent is having that self-control. The same way somebody pissed me off, I don't punch them in the face. Is the same way right. I'm not going like, to just go straight to beating my kid. Now, yeah, yeah some, sometimes you got to get snatched up. You can't be touching the stove, running in the street, <laughs> doing craziness. You know what I mean? But like... There's also opportunity for conversation, for opening up, teaching our children how to emote, mm -hmm. like let black kids emote. Love that. I mean, I think it's also like you, the kid doesn't belong to you. Like it's your kid, but they have their own body. Like just because they do something doesn't mean you're allowed to just hit them and drag them mm -hmm. around and like not manipulate in the mind, but manipulate their body. Mm -hmm. Like tell yeah. them you need to do this. Or I'm a pop you because I have control over you kind of. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's a fine line between that. Yeah. It's a fine line. Because I think when it has to do with, like, safety or, like, yeah. yes. your life. Like, if my kid is, like, you know, punches a teacher for some, you know, something like that. It's like, I don't want my kid to end up in jail. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want my kid to be on the wrong path. So it's definitely... Who knows? I'm definitely going to try to be better. Yes. <laughs> but who knows? One thing that I'll add, the last thing I love that I that I learned from my head teacher that I do now with my students is like affirming them in the moment when they do something like admirable. Mm, like yes. today this kid fell on the floor and this other kid was like, are you okay? And came and helped them up. And I peeped it from across the playground. And I was like, you're such a great friend. Yeah. Keep checking in on your friends when they're hurt. You should always do that. That's a great quality of yours. Yeah. So it's like encouraging the behavior, but also telling them that this is a part of who they are, and like giving them a compliment. Yeah. It's something I do with my kid too. I am just so impressed by the kids growing up now, how they can express themselves, the access to really? language that they have. I'm like, whoa, if we can keep this going, I think we're going to have some very emotionally uh, uh intelligent exactly. beautiful strong the black fine line. babies some of these kids are very soft i'll say that oh jesus here oh. she go i'll say that uh, it's good to emote but gotta toughen up a bit. i want to see what it look like if we just are like what if we were just mad emotional not yes, mad emotional what's wrong with what that? that look like okay the problem with that and i think this is what our mothers and their mothers recognize is yes that's beautiful in the home and around people that love you but in the real world not everyone gives a fuck okay so okay. like you have to, it, there needs to be a balance there needs to be a balance and i think we'll figure out that balance in our own ways but like it's not just all about like tell everyone about your emotions yeah, I mean, it's also like, oh, that kid took your stick. Go over there and tell that kid, Get it that's back. my stick. Right. Don't just sit there and cry about it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Why are you upset? Oh, he took your stick. Oh. Go get it back. Go get the stick. That's right. fair. Right. Uh, that's the balance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. My parents were telling I me beat people kids. up. And then when I beat their ass, I got in trouble. It doesn't make, make it make sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. My no. parents definitely told, <laughs> told me to like. Oh, my, my father was people. like, if somebody hits you, oh, if somebody beat the hits shit you. out of them. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Oh, if somebody hits you, you, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. But you don't hit first, I would say. No, I never but hit like, first, but I would yourself. just but defend yourself. Yeah. Hit tend to instigate until they hit me, and then it was just bad. But, you know, he was friends with all the principals, so they got <laughs> to hang out all the time. <laughs> you didn't get suspended. 
I did. Oh, very often. I am the epitome of very you can <laughs> you can hit your kid all the time and they'll still turn out bad. So just try to talk to them. <laughs> you are bad. There's no bad kids. My dad said verbatim that I was bad. <laughs> Well, that's probably why you thought you were bad, bad and acted badly. He said because he, they told you you were bad. I had to have fear instilled in me. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Yes. I know. We're, go- we're going to therapy. <laughs> Anywho, um, I highly suggest you guys check out the film documentary. It's on Netflix in our mother's gardens. Um, yeah, I. I really loved it. Like, I want to I want to redo it. With myself. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You want to just like record yourself, film yourself doing that, having those talks. Yeah. Or like do like recreate it with like my homies. Like my It's good people. to have those things like preserved in time. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've got a what would you do here. Oh. Okay, great. Because I just realized that that was coming up and I was like, I don't have one for you. I saw her getting that phone. I, was <laughs> I know. Like, what's she like, looking you ain't for? Nothing. Oh, damn. No, it's fine. I got one. I got. I got you, sis. Great. <laughs> got the whole laptop out, so I had to come prepared. Um. All right. So, hey, BGT, a new listener here, and love that you all accept listener letters. I've heard you all talk about online dating, and I'm very new to this world, but I feel like I need to put myself out there as I start ta- talking to different people on the apps. I don't know what questions to ask. Do I need to vet? them fully before going on a mm. date or just lean in and have fun help girl i don't know let's try to answer this question what <laughs> do you mean you don't know i don't know what you're supposed to do with these people at what questions to ask them so definitely like, google them you like, do it safety questions i don't I know do google them you google them you if you're gonna meet them you meet in a public space you tell 10 people where you're going you put on your lo- people or you tell people like it needs to be known. Don't just like location. don't go on a sneaky link. Like no, 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 no sneaky no, links no, no, on no, the no, apps, no. even though. No, don't I would don't, meet, I would don't, meet don't, earlier. Do, do as I say, too. not as I do. Right. Not Maybe too dark. Don't get don't don't not too dark. Not too late where, where you could just end up like, let's go to another place. Let's Wear rings, place. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I wasn't even thinking about all of that. I definitely didn't even take this as a safety thing. I thought she just meant like getting to know getting you. Getting to know That's you. That's what I was saying. I oh, don't know. Those qu- I don't know. Those She's like, what you mean? See, you I'm a know? mom. Me I'm in a, a mom. public place. <laughs> put, the, put on a ring. Safety first. Ten, send 10 people your location. <laughs> No, I literally don't know the getting to know you questions. I let her, I don't know. I'm like, should I start asking the questions that Bumble feeds me to ask? <laughs> oh, they give you suggested questions. They give you questions. questions. Yeah. So they know people are like, I don't know what to do. What are the suggested questions? I could pull them up. Let's, I don't know. Probably like, if you could only have one more meal ever. Okay, that's not what it be. It's like, that's a bit much. But I did have a friend say, uh, because on Hinge, you can make these prompts. And I think she prompts um, on like questions that are like kind of spicy. Not that spicy. Like it's, um, she asked Channel Orange or oh, what's the other Frank album that everyone loves with Novocaine on it? Not uh, Blonde. Uh, with the car on the front. Yeah. The other oh. one, you know, oh. and Did we all try one. What's it we called? You don't remember what it's called? No. Nostalgia Ultra. Nostalgia Ultra. Is. Yes. Channel Orange. So, so people will ask between those two albums and then, you know, she gets to have like, you know, a little bit of chat and ba- uh, Wait, with the that's guy. That's a good question. That's a great question. And I'm like, I'm just hoeing on the abs. I'm not even <laughs> doing the, I'm not You're doing not trying to get to know anyone. That's this is correct. But at the same time, I'd be like, damn, that's a good idea. I'll keep that in my never personal. Heard of albums ever before. Then you would never on, talk to that match. person. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or yeah, that's not your match. That's not your match. I don't necessarily, I don't think any of the guys I've dated listen to Frank Ocean. Like, I think they would listen, but I don't know if they have it on repeat. <sighs> That's okay. I mean, well, I you know what? He's Frank a sad boy. He says, "Yeah, the, yeah." I was say. He's giving. He's, he's yeah. I don't think everyone needs to listen to yeah, Frank Ocean. Okay. Um, but I guess if that's <laughs> what you, to hear if you that's what you like need, that. though, yeah. then but that's a good question for you. Yeah, that's what you need. Okay. Um, so, all right. So let, we can put this in categories, and you want to know their music taste? Music taste. You could ask them food interests. Right. What's your favorite restaurant in the city? You don't want some man who just eats. You know. I'm not going to be what rude, you about to say? I'm not going to name restaurants. Shake Shack? But you don't want a man who doesn't eat vegetables. How about that? <laughs> That's correct. That is co- correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. This makes me think of that group on Clubhouse where they were doing, like, the little oh. dating thing. 
uh, to get your soulmate. Five yeah, questions. Yeah, and they'd like, your drop yourself down to the main chat to the audience if you don't, whatever, whatever. And they would say, oh, they like, do that? Yeah. Y'all Those know this be, app, honey. I don't you know could ask, like, how much water do you drink a day? Right. I started thinking about water. That was literally the question. Oh, because of the water. Oh, because oh, this would be out? the one where they'd be yeah. like, uh, you take me on a date and you go to the gas station. Is that the one? No. Oh, and yeah, I get yeah. out of the car. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Yeah. If I get out of the car at the gas station? No, no, no. He gets out the car. And then what? And he's supposed to say, do you want anything? <gasps> right. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, that's the correct. That answer. was a good one. That, that's a that, really good. That one. was a good prompt. So what? What, what was? What did they say? What do you say to me? Or like, we get to the gas station and you get out of the car. Yeah, like what do you I do? picked you up. And number one, why is your tank full before you come and get me? Okay, <laughs> but but fine. You get to the gas station. He pulls up. Number two, don't leave a woman at the gas station by herself. Whatever. I'm like, I'm scared. People be carjacking. In the car? I don't like that. I don't want to sit in no car. Especially at night. I don't go to the gas station. That's mad scared. Or maybe it's in the day. Fine. Carjackers out. be there. Okay, daytime. <laughs> Where are the carjackers? Is this the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> what? Alabama, that girl got carjacked. In Atlanta, they are jacking cars left and right. You didn't hear about this? Correct. Well, we live in New York City. Well, you're definitely not getting gas for one. You, he's picking you up in an Uber. <laughs> okay but anyway just i really need to hear so what how do they phrase the question oh They're yeah like, sorry so what do you do um so you go on a date he t he goes to the gas station he gets out and what's the next thing you do okay what's the next thing you do you ask me do you, do you need anything do you need anything that's no. good that's i'd good. be like he gets condoms no <laughs> i'm kidding ma'am <laughs> i hope he does though just to be safe well you should have them in your purse yes you should as well but <laughs> you don't have to use all your safety condoms that you keep in your purse you're not supposed to be using other people's condoms you're supposed to be using your condoms that's a rule oh you're right but for the man what if he needs a certain type of condom well you're not supposed to use i don't want to make condom. assumptions what next you he know, needs he pokes holes in what them. if he needs the lamb skin <laughs> then he'll be using a cream and a sock somebody told <laughs> me somebody asked me what i do and i told her and she was like don't tell no niggas what you do. They're going to try to get you pregnant. <laughs> oh. Sure, sure, sure. Wait. Okay. So don't ask that question, though, ma'am. I don't think the gas Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry, miss. We did not answer the questions much. at all. What do you do? What are you interested in? Where do you live? Do you live alone? Yeah, I think... I think some good primary questions can be around, you know, where you live, what you do. Oh, what are you looking for? I yes, like to yes. start with that. Yeah, that's actually. a good one. That's good. Yeah. What you're looking for, because if the guy tells you flat out, I'm just looking to fool around and you're not about that, then you can quickly be like, nice to meet that's you. Adios. That's good. Yeah, that's a good that's one. Good. That's good. Best of luck, sis. I just be like, what's good? Where you live, if it's Best Eye, Bushwick, Crown, if it's in the vicinity, then I'm then like, what's your number? <laughs> I just go straight for that. Is the only date guys from Brooklyn? Uh, you know, I try to keep I the think radius it like you're tight. Looking for something specific. It's at this very time. specific. It's for you know, it's for those nights where you need. You oh. know, it's for those okay. nights. It's for those <laughs> nights. It's for those nights. Somebody <laughs> just told me they live in Coney Island. I said, <laughs> I said, how did you get here? How did you get in my Why radius? Am I <laughs> because I keep that shit in like a one mile Coney radius. Coney Island. Where are we? What are we doing with that? That's what I said. Wait, did you guys see that that video of the white lady <laughs> dancing? And it's to. Island girl, you yeah. island girl. Yeah, and it's like, and it's like when that. I go to Coney Island. Right. <laughs> and that could be an adventure, but like, and he works in the lower. So I'm like, wow. Okay, well, you might be able to Girl, be why are you acting like people middle. don't commute? This is New in York the City. Because that's a long way to go. I remember like, I know Coney Island. People lived in Coney Island when we were growing up. But like, You're from Brooklyn and, Brooklyn and you were working in Manhattan. That's a commute. No, no, no. Now, Coney, Coney Island, Island is like the last Coney stop. I, I mean, it's just on the, it's the, it's the that's Q train. That's the last stop. Last stop. <laughs> Actually, you're right. I was like, that sounds kind of cool. But I guess because I'm thinking about it as like an adventure. Like, I'll come see you in Coney Island. That's because yeah, you guys are on the, the How many times do you want to do that? You guys are on the blue trains and what they the don't connect. that Nathan's Glen? <laughs> a hot Cheese dog. fries? Oh, yeah, you're and fine. Y'all Yo, ever have frog legs at Nathan's? No, that's nasty. Excuse me, what? Not at Nathan's. I'll eat them that at is a restaurant. Ridiculous. Hood, hood shit. Huh? Yep. That's not hood shit. Yes. 
frogs. There aren't even legs. frogs at Coney Island. Yo, I would have frog legs with <laughs> which which my line? Line? Where are the frogs That's coming frog. from? Listen, they there's make no wildlife fr- in that Listen, water. Okay, Google Nathan's. Nathan's, Nathan's makes frog legs. Nathan's Coney Island. That sounds very fried. concerning. Oh! You nasty. Nathan's Coney Island frog legs. It was a prompt. That's weird. That's disgusting. Fried frog legs. That's mad. Not They're from Nathan's good. though. I don't mind fried 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 frog legs, but not from Nathan. They're not too bad. <laughs> My aunt actually threw them at us because we, as kids, we all went and she was like, try some. And we were like, oh, and like took a bite. It was actually kind of good, but we're like trying to like hide it. Like, and I think someone like spat it out and she found out and she took the whole container and. Oh yeah, you don't see, spit not, out food. Not good parenting. Right? <laughs> you don't spit out food though. We don't waste food. We don't, we don't waste things food. are nasty. Right. Oh, so you're going to beat your kid when they spit out food? I remember I got where you draw the line. spitting out food before. They're like, hey, stop acting like that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay. It was like an artichoke. Anyway, it all comes full circle. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, that was another episode of Black Girls Texting. Yes, really um, and nice. Also, there's a website. It's called BlackGirlsTexting.com. There is. There's a an Instagram. It's called Black Girls Texting. There's a Twitter. It's called Black Girls Text One. Correct. Cup our merch on BlackGirlsTexting.com. Oh, I'm actually merch. wearing it. Yes, check, check it out. Stand up, show them back. Twerk, twerk. You trying to be a part of the Black Girl Doing Shit Squad? Can you see Squala. it? Squala. And um, we created Correct. a Patreon. Uh, more to come on that. I still haven't heard the story of their sex party. Yeah, that they went to. And but there'll be more. Allegedly participated. Girl, why, why are you over here? She's like, little teaser, a little. You know, I'm sure you guys want to know. Inquiring minds. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. There'll be more to come. But thank you for rocking with us. And tell us more about like what you guys want to hear. I do like the feedback. We've been getting some comments on our YouTube. And, you know, it's. it. And tell us about your moms. I know. such a little sweet little episode it was so sweet Mm -hmm. go ask your moms and matriarchs in your family or maternal figures some questions about their lives and hold on to their stories don't let them die i think that was one thing that i want to just add like Mm. keeping the ancestors alive by continuing to like keep their stories alive saying their names honoring them that's immortality that i mean and stop we we not even we not even talking about these slave masters no more. I'm not even calling it the the GW bridge. I'm calling it that first slave owner bridge. Well, Glenn should keep calling Ma'am. it that because that's her lineage. Oh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> just kidding. JK, JK. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> wow! Fired. With that, I bid you adieu. <laughs> Damn. Bye. 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 <laughs>